Well, hello everyone, Larry with you here in our office, here in our home, and this most unusual video that we're doing. You've probably noticed that we haven't been on the channel for a few days now, and that is primarily because we were out of the country uh, for, a few, for several days as we were visiting London. And so in this video, I want to uh, just share some of the uh, sights and sounds of that trip as we took it to London, England over the past few days. And hope you enjoy the video. Don't forget to give us a thumbs up if you do enjoy the video. As always, please be sure to subscribe, share it with a friend, leave a comment down below. So come on, let's get started and see some of the sights and the sounds and the scenery of London, England during our recent trip there. After a long seven and a half hour flight, we finally were able to see the sunrise over England and in a few minutes we're landing at London Heathrow Airport and then we were picked up by our tour host and shuttled on to our hotel. Our hotel in London was the beautiful JW Marriott Grosvenor House Hotel. And here you can see one of the entrances to the hotel and then looking across the street at Hyde Park and some of the uh, traffic in the area, the double-decker buses and just a beautiful place, a beautiful time to be in London. Our daughter Nicole accompanied us on this trip to London and one of the places that she wanted to visit was the Warner Brothers studio tour of the making of Harry Potter. So we made our way up to platform nine and three quarters and I must say it was a very enjoyable tour of the Warner Brothers studio and, and the making of Harry Potter. A lot of the, uh, most of the costumes, all of the uh, stages, the back lots and things as they existed in the filming of the movie. One of my favorite parts was um, the destruction of Gringotts Bank and the fire-breathing dragon. And here you have just a little bit of that. On Tuesday we made our way down to Stonehenge and to the ancient Roman city of Bath, England. And here I am talking a little bit more about Stonehenge. Well thank you Larry, here we are in Stonehenge and you can see the large rock placements, stone placements behind me here. The gentleman on the bus was asking me about the, uh, what I thought about the place and I said the, the, biggest, the biggest thing to me was the mystery that surrounds it. Why was it placed here? Who placed it here? And how did they, how did they place it here? The guide on our bus was talking that some of these stones weigh as much as 35 to 40 tons and they came from whales some of them came from wells over 150 miles away 
and how was this feat accomplished? How did they transport it? This was prior to the invention of the wheel, and we're talking about a period of somewhere around 5,000 years ago. So Stonehenge, just a mystery. There's other burial mounds around here, and as the guide said, it seems like it was an honor to be buried within sight of this, um, this unusual and mysterious place. As we make our way on down from Stonehenge to the city of Bath, I thought I'd get just a little bit of a view of the countryside and the farmlands. This is mostly uh, sheep farming here, sheep and uh, lamb farming. And I thought I'd give you a, a view of what the countryside was like uh, on the outside of the city of London, headed on down toward the ancient Roman city of Bath, England. At this point, we've arrived at the uh, city of Bath, and here we have the Roman baths. The Romans inhabited or possessed, I guess you might say, this part of England from around 33 AD up until around 400 and something AD. And this was the only location in England where these hot springs actually bubbled up out and created this uh, kind of luxury resort area and the Romans built around this and uh, you can even see in some of this video where uh, the water continues to bubble um, in these warm hot springs baths. On Wednesday, we made our way down to Buckingham Palace for the changing of the guard. The changing of the guard at Buckingham Palace. We have a processional coming from both directions, so we swing down here and and when they get together they're going to stop. Or at least we were told they were going to stop whenever they get together. On Thursday, we made our way out to the um, town of Windsor, and of course here we visited uh, Windsor Castle. Windsor Castle was about a 25 to 30 minute coach ride out into the countryside outside of the city of London. Unfortunately, uh, inside the castle, we were unable to, uh, to take photographs and so here you can see some of the exterior uh, shots that we took and then here we have a little bit of commentary uh, from me about the castle. Well thank you again Larry and here we are at Windsor Castle and I'm going to try to swing around and get a shot of it in the background. At the same trying, at the same time trying to stay caught up with our guide, so we'll try our best to get some good shots and let you see Windsor Castle from our point of view. Thank you. 
the British flag indicating that the king is not here. On Friday, we went down to the Tower of London and the Tower Bridge, and this is the area in which the crown jewels are all kept. And I'm sorry to say we were not able to photograph any of the uh, crown jewels themselves, but it was a great viewing experience for us. Also, I might add that there's a great deal of pomp and circumstance surrounding the history and the royalty in the uh, London area, as you can see from this video. O qui es salvator omnium maxime e fideum. Verbum domini manet in eternum. It was somewhat eerie to listen to these ghostly voices from the past as the Tower of the Lon a Tower of London, that is, was a place of execution. Many beheadings took place in this area, and uh, prisoners were from all walks of life were uh, housed here. And you can see from this video some of their carvings that were left on the walls of the uh, of the tower itself. And then on Saturday, it was time to begin our eight and a half hour flight back to Alabama. Nikki um, had left just uh, about an hour earlier. I think she had about a nine and a half hour flight back to Denver, Colorado. And um, it was, it's always good to uh, be able to get back home. It's always sad to, um, to see a great week of vacation come to an end. But anyway, hope you enjoyed our trip. Don't forget to subscribe. Look forward to seeing you the next time. Thanks, everybody.